Welcome to the More Than Fitness Podcast. All right, let's get cozy here. Everything's good. Sound levels are good. I'm looking good. I got a haircut today, so uh, I know I'm looking a little bit extra fly, especially with my my most vibrant Hawaiian shirt on that I have. And yeah, let's get into it. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to mini-sode number 12 on the More Than Fitness podcast. And bear with me, I've been feeling a little under the weather, so if my voice, if I sound like 20 years older than I really am, that is why. If I have some sniffles, if I have to get a drink here, that is why I'm trying to get over the sickness. But I cannot uh, deny you guys the value of these mini-sodes. Uh, I get so much uh, value from doing them. I enjoy doing them. Uh, and also, I have a wonderful question to answer from one of you all, uh, the, the the five or six people that listen to this. I appreciate you. And so, like I said before on these mini-sodes, I want to make it into a little Q&A show. And today's question is a good one. And I think there's going to be, because of my demographic, probably about mostly, you know, 20 to 45-ish year old, somewhere somewhere around there, um, men and women. That's typically going to be my demographic. Um, this question could be pertinent to, to quite a few of you. Uh, and and let me just let me just go ahead and get into the question and then I'll explain a little bit more. Uh, but Brandon, thank you, Brandon, for your question. Brandon asks, uh, he says, I'm trying to be healthier and bring my weight down from 230 pounds to 185 pounds, but a real stick in my progress is marijuana, which I use for anxiety relief. Every time I eat or smoke marijuana products, I lose all semblance of willpower and eat 1,000 to 3,000 calories. Any advice to balance marijuana usage and diet goals? Uh, this is this is a great question, and I don't think I mean obviously because it's a taboo subject and uh, things like that. I don't think there's a lot of good information out there uh, on questions like this, and I think it's I think it's super interesting, right? Because anybody knows that you know marijuana can cause uh, the munchies uh, or whatever, but I actually even dug up the science on how that works. So I just think that's in- interesting. I always think appetite regulation and anything um, that can affect appetite regulation as far as like exogenous substances go, uh, I think it's interesting. So uh, from examine.com, they talk about, hold on one quick, r- real sec. R- one quick, real sec. Hold on one sec, real quick. Okay. Um, it talks about um, how there is a, let's see, there's a cannabinoid receptor type one um, that THC actually binds to, and it CB1 can be found in the following areas, the basal ganglia, where it may enhance eating pleasure, the limbic forebrain, where it may enhance food palatability. So that just means that the food tastes really good. Um, and it's just, it's very easy to eat basically. Um, the stomach and small intestine, uh, small intestine, which both regulate ghrelin, which is an appetite stimulating hormone that speeds digestion, uh, and the hypothalamus and rhombencephalon, two sections of the brain that help regulate food intake. Um, yeah, so it activates the CB1 receptor and then it THC essentially increases appetite through this. And there's a few other mechanisms as well, but the science is pretty clear that the munchies are in fact very real. So I understand that this, uh, Brandon, I understand that you could be, be struggling with this issue. And before a lot of people turn this off or whatever, cause they hear marijuana or something and they think, oh, this isn't going to apply to me. It's like the advice that I'm going to give Brandon is the exact, I mean, it's very similar advice that I would give a lot of you who struggle with like, let's say nighttime eating, uh, or, or nighttime binging or, or something along those lines. Um, so with that being said, I think your solution lies with planning to be, to be completely frank. Um, you know that this is going to happen. This has clearly been a repeatedly, uh, um, this has been a repeated problem that you've been dealing with. So the best thing that you can do is get ahead of this, right? So you you smoke or you consume uh, marijuana um, and then you get the munchies, right? But I think I think what you need to figure out is 
I think why this happens is because the main activity that you're looking forward to after you consume the marijuana is eating. Like that's one of the big perks. I mean, the, the like of munchies, right, is the dopamine response that you get from eating, the pleasure that you get from eating. So if like your main thing after you you smoke or consume marijuana is to, okay, I'm going to sit down and maybe like watch something. And then I'm also going to just eat a lot of food because it feels good. Well, you can, you can get ahead of that, right? You can plan ahead and uh, like you could figure out other things to make sure that you're, you're preoccupied with other than making the main activity. Okay. I'm going to smoke this marijuana and then I'm going to eat, right? That's going to be the main activity instead. I mean, it could be a million different things. It could be, it could be reading. It could be, um, it could be, uh, uh, video games. It could be cleaning your house. It could be, uh, making a to-do list for tomorrow. It could be fucking, carpentry or something. I don't know. Watering some plants, right? Taking care of a zebra. Um, (laughs) uh, I don't know, but just, you have to figure out something that after you get done, uh, consuming the marijuana, having a game plan, like, okay, what am I going to do as soon as I get done? And if you may, may hear me say that and you're like, oh, well, I always eat after I do that. And then that's how I relax and things. It's like, okay, well, here's what you need to do. If that's the case, you already know that it's very hard um, to, to, uh, uh, contain your willpower whenever, whenever you do, do, whenever you do this, right? So all you do is budget some of your calories for later in the day. I think this is where intermittent fasting could be somewhat useful as long as you aren't using intermittent fasting as your excuse to just binge at nighttime, right? But as far as let's say you have 2000 calories to eat throughout the day, you could have, 500 calories at one meal, 500 calories at lunch, and then five or and then a thousand calories uh, at dinner time, right? So you have 500 calories breakfast, 500 at lunch, and then a thousand calories at dinner, and then that way you're you're still staying within your your um, caloric goals, but you're allowing yourself to have a little bit more flexibility and eat quite a bit more food at dinner time right? So just budgeting your calories for later in the day, that can be, that can be super helpful. Uh, but also, and you should definitely look at my last mini sode, mini sode number 11, uh, nine ways to stay full while dieting. You could use that in conjunction with, um, budgeting your calories, right? So making sure that those a thousand calories, um, don't come from just junk food because you can get to a thousand calories eating double stuffed Oreos very, very quickly. Um, so yeah, make sure that the, the, the foods that you are eating are, are nutrient dense foods. They're pretty healthy foods. And what this does is instead of, uh, it makes them nutrient dense as opposed to energy dense. Uh, and so this would be, for example, fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, um, you know, the, the typical quote unquote healthy foods, uh, that have a lot of food volume that are going to fill up your stomach, but it's not going to be tons of calories. So it's also, it's, it's, it's going to satisfy your craving to eat a lot during this time, but it's not going to interfere with your diet goals because it's not very energy dense foods, right? A few examples of this, uh, a good go-to meal that I've been having for dinner. I've been having a little bit of Brenner, actually a little bit of breakfast and dinner put together. Um, uh, so I have, I have three whole eggs. And again, this is going to be different. I'm like 190, 190 pound male who exercises frequently. I've got a higher uh, muscle mass than, than a lot of you. So uh, I have a little bit more flexibility with the amount of calories that I can consume. However, this meal is still, you can, you can, uh, adjust it so that it can, it can fit your needs as well. But as an example of a meal that I like to eat, I'll eat three whole eggs and then I'll pour in usually like 50 to hundred grams of just egg whites. And I'm not measuring this. I just have three eggs and then pour in some egg whites. Uh, I scramble that up and then I also also eat hash browns, which are just potatoes, right? Usually the, the issues with hash browns comes from all the oils that people uh, will fry them in or dump them in, um, uh, uh, the, the oil that they'll dump on the hash browns. That's where a lot of the calories end up coming from, right? But hash browns are just sliced up potatoes. Um, but I just do, I do hash browns and then I'll do the, uh, the spray olive oil. So I'm not even dumping the, uh, um, the bottle oil in there. It's just a spray. And, and then, so I, I make hash browns. I use about two servings of hash browns and it's still like 40 grams of carbs or something like that. Potatoes are very high on the satiation index as far as how full they make you after, after you eat them. Um, so hash browns are a great low calorie, highly satiating food that you can eat 
during this time. Uh, I put a little bit of ketchup on it. Ketchup still pretty low calories. Um, and then I also uh, have some fruit as well. So something like strawberries, any type of berries really. Watermelon is going to be really good. Uh, clementines or oranges, stuff like that. And you think about those foods, or those fruits are really juicy. They have a lot of water in them. Uh, so you're going to be able to eat a lot of those uh, for very few calories. But again, it's going to be very, you're going to have that sweet and salty combination that you may be craving. Um, so you just had to get a little bit more creative with, with these, these food choices that you decide to eat during this time that can still satisfy those cravings, but it's not just double stuff Oreos or cakes um, or, you know, sugary cereal or something like that. You have to make sure that you have this ready. It doesn't take a lot of willpower to make. It could be already ready. Or you just know like, okay, like me, I enjoy eating eggs and hash browns um, with ketchup and fruit. Like I, I, I enjoy eating that. So I look forward to eating that. Um, but it also happens to be good for me as well, right? So that's, that's one option. Another quick option would be like low fat popcorn. So 94% fat-free popcorn is a great option because it's, again, high volume. You can eat a lot of it. There's going to be a decent amount of fiber in there. For, it's a whole grain, right? Uh, so you can eat this low-fat popcorn. They have 100-calorie uh, single-serving bags. You could eat one or two of those bags easily, uh, and that's a decent amount of food. You could pair that with some Greek yogurt, uh, which is which is also it's a high protein. It's also going to be a pretty filling food as well. Uh, and then pair that with some strawberries. Again, those, those fruit choices. Um, See here, I'm sick. I got to cough one second. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize. However, this is a, this is a, we're, we're on a roll here and I want to, I want to keep going. Uh, another option would be beef jerky. Beef jerky is going to be, think about beef jerky. It's tough. It's hard to chew. And whenever things are hard to chew, it's going to take longer to eat them. This is a, this is an example of a low palatability food, right? Like I talked about earlier, um, that high palatability are, are foods that are just easier to eat. So think like mashed potatoes, like buttery, salty mashed potatoes. It's super uh, palatable. You can eat it. I mean, potato chips and cookies and things like that. These are also highly palatable foods. You can eat them very quickly, but beef jerky for some of us, right? It's going to take a long time to chew and eat in general. So you have to eat slower. Uh, so you're going to be more satiated. So these are going to be good choices uh, that you can, you can use. And if you combine all of these things together um, and, and make sure that you have something planned, you budget your calories. Uh, so I mean, whenever I say have something planned, have an activity planned, then you budget your calories and then you have a healthy meal set up that you can, you can eat pretty easily. And then the last thing would be to eliminate any trigger foods in the house. If everything else that I just said doesn't work and you still find yourself, um, you know, crushing some cereal or crushing some cookies or sweets or something like that, just get rid of the food entirely right? That's sometimes what you have to do. Um, you have to make sacrifices. And if this is something that you plan on continuing doing, uh, you need to, you need to make sure that you have those trigger foods out of the house. And then that's just going to give you no option, but to eat what's in the house. And typically that's going to be the, the, the healthy foods, right? So Brandon, I hope that was helpful. It's a, it's a good question, right? <coughs> Again, I apologize, but <clears throat> I'm getting over the sickness. I'm trying to help you guys. Uh, but yeah, if you if you combine all of those things together and with it, just a little bit of planning, you're going to be able to get through this. Just make sure that you don't just hope for the best, right? Because that's where we end up uh, shooting ourselves in the foot because we just hope to, to, to manage this. But plan ahead. Uh, follow those, those uh, couple steps that I laid out there for you. And uh, best of luck, man. I really, I really hope that helps. And my voice is going. So that is it for mini-sode number 12 on the More Than Fitness podcast. Thank you for listening and for watching.